Next up, I'd like to introduce a very special man, Ronaldo Pearson. On August 6th, he started marching in Atlanta, Georgia. And he walked from Atlanta to Washington, D.C. And now, 49 days later, he is here, he is ready, he is with the youth, he is with the movement, and he is ready to work with us. Thank you, Ronaldo! And the one thing we did right was the day we started to fight. Keep your eyes on the prize. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Keep your eyes on the prize. Hold on. I have decided to dial 911 on American democracy. Dial 911 on political corruption before it kills us. And that's why I started on Tuesday, August 6th in Atlanta, Georgia, because that was the 54th anniversary of the Voting Rights Act, which is important to note. In 2013, the Supreme Court gutted the Voting Rights Act, which makes our generation the first generation to witness America become less democratic. So that's why I have walked now some 1.5 million steps, over 700 miles, because no matter, thank you. Yes, my ankles are really tired, my body is tired. I've got quite the tan line, as you can see. Um, but it's important, why? Because no democratic struggle in American history from the American Revolution to the Civil Rights Movement to women's suffrage to marriage equality, no a democratic struggle in American history has been won without the weapon that Dr. King calls the sword that heals, non-violent direct action. And more to the point, there's something called this Declaration of Independence, where we see that it talks about, right after that famous line of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, it says at any point where our safety or happiness is compromised by those in power, who it says gets their power from the consent of the governed, then we have the power, we the people have the power to abolish or alter that government. But when I heard about this climate strike, When I heard about how Generation Z and Millennials were coming together to strike across the world, it gave me so much pep in my step. It, it literally boosted my spirits, and I decided at that time that I would have to add a few miles to my journey every day because there was no way I was gonna miss this. They call our generation lazy and entitled. But I've walked 700 miles, and you guys are striking right now, and data just came out recently that it was our generation that, for the first time, outnumbered every other voting bloc in this past 2018 election. So we are here to remind those in power those in power, that the power of the people always, always, always outpowers the people in power. And I'm here to remind you 
that yes, this is an emergency. But no matter what the issue is, no matter what your sickness is, existential or not, it cannot be addressed until we address the pre-existing condition of our broken and corrupt democracy. So that's why on tomorrow at 2 p.m., I will be sitting with others, sitting in on the steps on the other side of this capital, sitting, to, sitting in civil disobedience, civil rights movement style, until Washington heeds this emergency to protect our right to vote. No more voter purges. To make our elections secure and competitive. And to end political corruption. I don't have to tell you that lobbyists, the fossil fuel industries, lobbyists have spent some $1 billion since 2015's Paris Climate Accord to block climate action. So this is what this is about because no matter what your issue, no matter what your sickness, we can't fix these existential threats until we fix this democracy. That is to say, all of these issues assume that we have a fully functional democracy intact to address them. You can check us out at www.democracy911.us. And with that, I'll leave you with this quote from Rabbi Maimonides. The world is equally balanced between good and evil. Your next act will tip the scales. Thank you.